My name is Meredith Sorensen, and this is part two of a slideshow about a hike I did in 2004 the length of Madagascar. Madagascar's culture and diet hinges around rice. Josh and I were trained to teach SRI, or the System of Rice Intensification, that both improves the long-term health of the soil and maximizes rice yields. The SRI technique has six guiding principles. Plant early, about eight days old, add compost, give space, plant one seedling per spot, weed early and often, and control the water. The system of rice intensification, or SRI, helps maximize the full genetic potential of each rice seedling. With the six-fold increase in yield plus healthy soil, SRI improves the health of the land and the people. In this village, we gave a hands-on demonstration. Josh showed how to gently scoop up the young seedlings. Then we prepared a field for planting. Then, with the rope tied with knots every 25 centimeters, we helped plant the young seedlings, taking care of each root and each plant. With hands-on experience, this group of farmers hopefully absorbed the lesson of spacing young seedlings. Some places had already heard about the SRI technique. Others were still learning. We walked from village to village. Sometimes we felt like we were in the middle of nowhere. The path was muddy. Our packs were often heavy. Our feet were often sore. But we took care of ourselves. Josh and Hal played a game of chess daily. We made it a habit to stretch. I monitored our progress with a GPS unit. And we caught some fantastic waterfalls. 99 days after setting out from the southernmost tip of Madagascar, we reached our midway point of Moramanga. We were so proud. At this time, Josh and Hal had other commitments. So after a three week break, I resumed the Hike Madagascar endeavor alone. I taped up my feet, put on a smile, and took everything I had learned from Hal and Josh and used it with my own style. I continued doing rice presentations, sometimes three in one day. I found that I am a teacher inside and that I like sharing knowledge and that I was comfortable speaking in a foreign language, talking about rice, using two sticks and a piece of rope as a prop. A lot of people ask me, was it scary to be alone as a woman? My response is, a woman hiker is rarely alone, and I made friends everywhere I went. Malagasy people are super friendly. The hike, quite literally, followed the road less tra traveled. The northeast corner of Madagascar constantly battles potholes and erosion from cyclones. I often looked down at my two dusty feet and thought, I have linked this entire country with my left and right foot. It made me feel connected to this country because I had seen it just the way most of the population sees it, on foot, or when the road disappears, I floated it. The patterns I saw along the way lent themselves to introspection. How do we shape nature? How does nature shape us? How can we learn from our environment? Wouldn't this planet be better off if we weren't even here? Who supports what? And what kind of a footprint are we leaving on this earth? Through fire, through rain, I learned it's important to remember to have fun along the way. Because learning is done best when you are engaged. On December 23rd, 2004, just days before a tsunami hit Asia, I made it to the northernmost point of Madagascar, or Cap d'Ambre. 
It was kind of anticlimactic to get there, but I managed to take some victory shots. I was proud to be the first documented person to hike the length of Madagascar. Thanks for sharing a small slice of my journey.